My players recently went through a TPK, which means I'll soon be launching a brand new campaign. So I thought today I'd walk you through how I set up a new campaign in Foundry VTT, including what modules I'm using these days. So grab yourself a tasty beverage and settle in because my name is Anto and on this channel, I'm all about showing you different tips and tricks to help you play more and prep less. So let's dive into it. Installing Foundry. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is to head to the Foundry website, log into your account, and then go to the purchased licenses section. From here, download the latest version of Foundry VTT, because if like me, you don't want to update your core system mid campaign, you might not be able to do this within the app itself because the version that you're running is too old. Or if you come into this for the first time, this is how you get there. Once it's downloaded, just run through the installer and let it do its thing. Setting up a server. With Foundry installed, we can go ahead and we can make our world. My new campaign is going to be using the 2024 Dungeons and Dragon rules. So the first thing I need to do is install that game system. When you open up Foundry, Foundry, head to the game systems area and click install system. From here, search for your game. And in my case, it's going to be D&D 5th edition and hit the install button. Once that's done, you want to come over to your game worlds section and click on the create world button. Here, you're going to give it a name. You're going to choose your system. So in my case, it's going to be D&D 5th edition and click create world. You've also got options for adding world descriptions and a background image, but you can also also set these later if you want. My essential add-ons. The next thing that you want to do is you want to install any modules that you want to use. To do this, head on to the add-ons module area of the main Foundry page and click install module. From here, you can search for any mods that you want to use and click install. Now I'm gonna break my mods down into my absolute essential mods, the ones that I wouldn't run my game without. And then all the others are gonna be nice to have, ones that will improve the experience in various ways, but that I could live without if I had to. Now the first mods that I install on a fresh foundry server are always dice tray and dice so nice. Dice tray adds these clickable dice buttons down below the chat menu, which makes rolling dice just so much easier. And then dice so nice makes it that you get these lovely 3D dice that roll across your screen, which helps get us one step closer to that feeling of being in person when we're playing. These are the two mods that I install in every single server that I'm running, no matter the game system. But if I'm running fifth edition D&D, the next mod that I go and install is the D&D Beyond Importer from Mr. Primate. This syncs with your D&D Beyond account and lets you pull in all of the content that you have on D&D Beyond as foundry like monsters, item spells and adventures and it's absolutely essential if you have a library of content on D&D Beyond. The other core 5e module that I always install is 5e stat block importer. This module adds a little button to your active section and it allows you to copy and paste any fifth edition stat block from any source and then allow the mod to pass that information and make a foundry actor which you can then pull into scenes. It's not always perfect but it is always much faster than manually creating a monster. So if you have third party resources that you have PDFs of, for example, and they don't have a Foundry module available, this is a great way to get some of that content into Foundry in your server much quicker than manually typing it out. Pretty much all of the other modules I personally use are just cosmetic options, which add things like animations to spells or attacks, add this video game style combat tracker to the top of the screen, or simple things like a customizable countdown clock to add some time pressure to scenes. Everything else is just the dependencies that these mods rely on. The home scene. Once I have all my mods sorted out, I like to establish my home scene. This is the screen on which I'll usually start most of my sessions. And for me, I like to use the map of my region that my players are exploring. To do this, I head over to the scenes tab. I click create scene, give it a name. We're just going to call it home. And then in that pop-up, I choose the image that I want to use. And for that, I'm going to go into Jewel Cities maps and I'm going to choose my latest version of the Jewel Cities of Talavar and click save and let that load up. And then we're just going to view that scene. And you can see this would be the scene that my players would see every time they load into the map. If you like the look of this map and want to know more about the setting, I'll link a playlist of live stream VODs down below, which cover a lot of the creation of this region. And if you want to get even more goodies from my homebrew world, you should consider signing up for a channel membership. Channel members get new exclusive videos like campaign diaries, world building deep dives, game dev videos where I work on my own RPGs, detailed videos on things like monster building and a whole bunch more. And you also get early access to regular channel videos like this one. And you help keep the lights on 
and the camera rolling i couldn't do this without the support of channel members so check it out using the join button down below now once i've got my home scene set up i usually import all of my dnd beyond content to do this i will go over to the compendiums tab and click on the dnd beyond muncher and then follow the instructions that that gives it's really important here to make sure you import spells and items before monsters because if you don't the monsters can behave really weirdly so i'll usually just go over to the munch tab and go left to right going spells item monsters and then anything that i might need from adventure content because this is a homebrew campaign i don't really need to worry about adventure content right now so we're just going to munch spells items and monsters and after a little while of waiting, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of content imported into the compendium from D&D Beyond, including all of the monsters that I have access to. So this is a really quick way for me to be able to add close to like 3000 monsters with tokens ready to use. We've got the 2014 core rules monsters, the new updated monster manual monsters and everything from the expanded rules, which includes third party content. From here, we're gonna wanna create our characters. And to do this, you can either use the D&D Beyond importer to pull in something that's been created in D&D Beyond, or you can head over to the actors tab, click create, a new actor go ahead and save that and then you can jump over to the compendium and drag in all of the necessary pieces to get their species their class and their equipment the last thing i like to do when making a new campaign in foundry is to get a head start on making a soundscape for my games i've talked before about how music and sound effects can have a huge impact on the immersion and enjoyment of the game so whenever i make a new campaign i head over to the playlists tab and i make a couple of new playlists i make three to begin with one for battle music one for ambient music and one for ambient sound effects then i'll head over to something like tabletop audio and download a few tracks for each category or i'll grab some sound effects from somewhere like my instance to get things like lightning or glass breaking creaky door openings punch sounds or explosions and that's everything that i do to set up a new campaign in foundry in 2025 if you want to see more details about how i make my foundry games more immersive for my players check out this video but until next time, happy gaming.